coward dies a thousand times. But a courageous man dies but once. Well, I've had to be a very courageous man with this build of this Harry. Anyway, welcome back to part two, because we have had a little bit of a technical problem today. Uh, I'd forgotten that my memory card was full. Oops, a bit of a schoolboy error. Anyway, there we go. Can't be good at everything, can't we? So, back to the the story of the Sea Harrier build. And we just got talking about parts that go, you're not told where they go. And I'm going to have a drink. Oh, that's good. So we were just ranting and raving about the fact that there are so many parts that have got these locating nubs or spigots on them, and there's no corresponding place for them to actually go. Uh, and I was talking about the undercarriage. Now, something particularly important for anybody who does build this kit, and I know that Scott Isles, my friend Scott Isles, he will tell you that this is right. This is a very irritating part. This is the main gear leg. And this, this has got, uh, ignore, the, ignore the business end of it, let's just talk about the top of it. Now they, again, they've shown it in a very unhelpful way. But imagine, above my finger, this part is like the shape of an F, letter F. And the truth is that the bottom part has got a hole, a location hole, for it to go in. And the second piece is just stupid, because the second bit bar of the F... It doesn't serve any massive purpose, to be quite honest with you. And in fact, it gets in the way. Now, you need a little bit of it just to sort of space pitch the uh, the leg away from the wall. But if you don't modify this, you can't get... The, you, the, the two pieces prevent the bottom one going anywhere near the hole. A completely stupid and heinous piece of design. Now, I presume Scott did what I did, which is I realised this and... I snipped, I, I sort of halved its depth, there's the F, and I sort of chopped the bottom bit like that, and then, so it's now like that, and then there's a hole here, it goes into the hole, and this then gives about the right pitch and angle for the leg uh, to go against the, close to the wall of the bulkhead, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. <coughs> Absolutely ridiculous, and only when you actually get that part in your hand do you think, what, what, well that doesn't, and it's like, like the Star Trek thing, isn't it? Where, you know, instead of Kirk, Admiral Kirk screaming, Gone! You, you don't, you scream, Kinetic! Kinetic! None of this fits! You bleep! <laughs> oh, I'm starting to rant and I, I've only just come back on the air. Oh dear. Anyway, you get the picture. A complete mismatch between the location hole, location point itself, and the actual part. No correlation between the two. And you've got, this is what I said about the time it took to build this kit. How it eats your time because it's just got one piece of stupidity after another. I mean, the person that wrote these instructions was an idiot. The diagrams are fine, but they're, they're apart from the inaccuracy of the data, the actual images are good. But they've just got inaccurate information and they have parts that do not fit together. We've got parts that are, you know... At the end of the day, here's the question. Anybody, nobody, just don't go there. Don't try and defend this kit, anybody. Because I'm just going to say to you, if you if you were Kinetic's boss, CEO, and he said, I think you've been very unfair on our product, and I'll say, did you ever actually try to build it? Did you ever actually try to follow this nonsense that you've actually published? Because it bears no relation. Much of it bears no relation to the parts. The parts, bear no, some of them bear no relation to each other. Now, I'm going to come in a moment to some of the plus points of the kit, because it's not entirely bad. It's only 95% bad. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I know everybody's saying, he's oh, what's he moaning about? He's got a beautiful sea harrow. Yeah. To get to that, though, you are going to suffer pain. A lot of mental pain. It's quite ridiculous. Anyway, so we've basically gone through this, and it gives you a little bit of an idea about just how ridiculous. And the, the level of challenge, every part is a challenge. Pretty much every part. With the exception of... The ones we're coming to now. But again, so we've got... This is when I had this thing about the, the drop tanks. Well, they're not actually, they don't actually drop them. They don't usually drop them. Um, but we've got the additional fuel tank storage um, underline, under wing stores. Have a look at this. And at first you'll think, well, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but that's because you don't understand the context, which I'll explain. So it's got... You've got A. This is where I, got, I came adrift here. So I built up the 100-gallon tanks. Uh, or is it 100 is it 180? Sorry, my memory's gone. Uh, 
100 or 190. 190. So that's 190 and that's the 100. And it's the 100 that we used in the Falklands campaign on Invincible. <clears throat> I've had that confirmed by somebody who was there. Um, so it's got A or you've got B. And this is re regarding the loadout, which you'll come to in a second on the next page. I won't jump ahead, but it's got, there you go, loadouts A, B, E, etc. However, here's the problem. You're all thinking, well, that's fine. That's what Tamiyar do. That's what Airfix do. What's his problem with that? The problem is that at no point beyond that A, E, B, no, at no point does it actually tell you which aircraft it pertains to, which variant in the, the markings or the colour schemes. You are left completely in the dark. There's no, no correlation or connection between that A, B, C to the aircraft at the end, which it describes. This one's Invincible and this one's Hermes and this one was later after the war. It doesn't tell you which is which. There's no A, B, C, A, G, you know, D, E, F, etc. There. It just stops mentioning this A. What a load of Charlies. Honest to God. You couldn't make this stuff up. It's like, what the... You're constantly trying to interpret what are they, what they're trying to tell you in a way that is... And this is not lost in translation. This is illogical. This is nothing to do with language because there's no language being used. They can't even get the numbers right here. Let me show you. So, over the page we go. They can't get the numbers right. They can't even remember that they should have numbers. Look at this one. So, there are three different types of pylon. And I nearly came unstuck here again. <coughs> it should be very easy to do. So, we've got the pylon here. This is for the £1,000 bomb. This is the kit one, which is not as good. And I didn't use this, as you know. I used the... In fact, that's a, actually, that's a cluster bomb, not a £1,000 bomb. A cluster bomb. You can tell by the, the fuse driver uh, propeller at the front. It's the £1,000 and has it at the back. Doesn't even mention what numbers they are. And as I mentioned, let's see over the page, we've got three different designs. So we're none the wiser which one is which. Now here, it, it then gives you part numbers, but it doesn't there. So which one is that supposed to be then? You total muppets. Now in fairness, I said I'd be fair and balanced. Try to, you know, not make myself sound like I'm on some bitter campaign. <laughs> These actually are the best parts in the kit. The pylons and the stores, with the exception of the matter rocket pods, where some Charlie in Kinetic has obviously seen a photograph. Somebody said it was at the Paris Air Show, they had a photograph showing the, uh, the matter Sneb rocket pods with the actual rockets poking out, which it's done to do to air shows for effect, so you can see that's what they look like. They are not like that. They are not like that in service. They are retracted in, ready to fire. They do not protrude out the front like a lipstick or dogs, you know. It doesn't look like that at all. That's completely amateurish. And they've done this in the Harrier GR3 kit, the same problem again. Completely wrong. So that is amateurish. Then we get on to simple basic things like the numbers of the parts, which they keep on getting wrong, and this becomes utterly confusing. So here we've got, the, there's like a, a secondary... Um, support pylon here that the sidewinders have i think it's to do with the spacing and help helping to add weight it effectively acts as ballast i think um to, to help the center of gravity g g5 no it isn't it's g15 that's completely wrong they can't even get the most basic data right and then now we come to the absolute classic right at the end this is where most people and i've seen lots of kits built wrong through no fault of the modeler at all not anybody else's fault but kinetics Look at this little classic setup here. This is fun, isn't it? So, this is the, um, I was going to say, I don't know, it's not an element, it's just a wind direction indicator that we have. You know, like on the Tomcat, they have a bit of string, don't they? Well, we have this like a weather vane, um, and it's right in front of the, of the cockpit. But, hang on, question mark. It's, again, you can see I've written notes, but ignore my notes for a second and just look at the main print. Again, it's suspended in space with no indication of where that goes. There is no hole for it. There is no location for it on the fuselage. Same with this one here. This one tells you that it must go here. And I've seen many, many people put it there, which is understandable, and it's wrong. It actually goes just off the centre line, just, just a fraction left of the centre line. There. Stupid. And then we've got the worst one of all is here. 
I've written again, try, try not to be led by my uh, pointing it out, but there's actually an intake part in the kit that's just not mentioned. It's a bit like the photo etch parts. There's no mention of it at all. And it's again, it's only because I've got lots and lots of reference material, like, like James Moe would have in his head, uh, that I know about this stuff. Oh, hang on a minute, I think I'm about to get a delivery. Oh, hang on a second, I, I deserve a drink because I've started to run. Hold on a second. I do need a refill. Oh, thank you very much. That's very kind of you, Dean. Thank you. Isn't that nice? I get a new fresh one. Look at that. Um, <clears throat> so I say, if you're not James Mower or or me who studied, you know, sixty or eighty photographs, it's ridiculous. How can you build a, 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 a even half realistic kit when they don't even mention parts? You know, and and it's it's a trap, isn't it? Because if you think about it, because there are two versions, you think, oh, well, uh, you look at the parts and you think, normally you think, well, why are these left over? But you don't think that because you've got so many left over. And you just think, well, some of these are obviously for the FA2 and they don't apply to this kit. No, they do apply to it. So, zoom in on the kit, because then you can really see what I'm talking about. This nose area is what we're on about. <coughs> we really need to have a look at this. Those intakes and the now you can see here, can't you? Now you can see the, the little thing that looks like a little aeroplane model almost in front of the cockpit, and then you've got that intake which I've just mentioned. Can you see it just bulging up? Well, that intake isn't mentioned in the instructions, yeah. They would have you put the let me get a little bit closer for you. Let's just bring this in. There we go. They would have you putting that little aerial in that circle. You can actually see that I mount, if you look really closely, I'm giving away a trade secret now. You can actually just about make out that I did actually originally mount it there and I quickly moved it and gave it a gentle blow over, which nobody apart from the millions of people on YouTube now watching are gonna know. <laughs> but this is all misdirection from Kinetic. All three of those parts are absolutely ham-fistedly done in terms of the direction they give you. Utter stupidity, yeah. Same with these. Uh, just trying to make sure we don't have any accidents here. Same with these uh, aerials underneath. There they are. That's now in the correct positions because I've used photo as a reference. Not right up front near the nose cone like they wanted you to put it. What a bunch of chumps! I mean, really. You couldn't make this stuff up. It's rank stupidity. You know, you can understand in instructions on a complex kit that an odd mistake gets made, that's human nature, maybe it slips through the net. But they, these guys don't have a net, that's the entire problem. How can they be taken seriously, you know, when you're up against people like Katare and Airfix and Tamiyar? I mean, Airfix are much cheaper than these guys, aren't they? I mean, okay, you can argue that the new Buccaneer is about the same price. Well, we all know that the new Buccaneer is a far better product than this is. This is terrible, really. Quality control, there isn't any. I mean, who passed this off? There's another one here I should have just mentioned before I pass off this page. You can see that there was a, I've just highlighted it because it was a very poor fit. And it, it, well, I don't think it was the plastic um, clear part, the canopy. I think it was actually the, the frame. It wasn't quite the right shape. So there's a lot of fettling and messing about. I actually had to use filler and all sorts. <sighs> anyway, then we come to the last bit. Of the last stage of complete stupidity. So we've got our uh, flaps and the uh, ailerons and here we have got these little flaps these are the obviously the aero covers for the actuators for the flap and if you look very carefully you can see there get close can you see that there are two little spigots two little plugs one goes in the plane's wing and one goes in the actual flap okay as you'd expect so, naturally then, you would expect there to be, of course, there will be a corresponding hole in the aircraft wing, or one that perhaps you're supposed to drill for that to go into. No, there is no hole. You are not indicated to drill any holes. There is nothing marked, and you realise that another one where you have to cut off the spigot and just glue it in place. You know, it's like the person who designed one sprue didn't talk to the person who's designing the sprue. I've never seen anything like it. And then last but not least, um, you see there, I've actually written, it says, no hole in the wing. 
nor were we told to drill one I've put at the bottom. What are they thinking of? I mean, this is just rank imbeciles. They're just imbeciles. And then last but not least, as I mentioned earlier, this is the, the plates, the mounting plate for the all-moving tailplane. And they helpfully, as I've highlighted it in the pink, of course, but they have helpfully just shown it from above. So it looks like a straight line. Now, this is an almost figure of eight shaped, figure of eight stroke kidney shape. And you don't know which way around, you don't know which side to put it on. And they've both got the same part number, as you can see, which is doubly confusing. So that, again, doesn't help you because you're not, they're not sort of index linked with a different number. How are you going to get this right, you idiots? So, again, photographs, photographs. And I had to check and check. And you're spending all this time, I'm constantly on the internet. I spent more time on the internet than actually making it. Looking at the, the actuator arm for the air brake because it doesn't tell you what colour it should be. Looking at exactly what the undercarriage should look like and what colours it should be painted. You know, looking at the, the gun pods and the markings it should have, which they haven't mentioned, even though they provided the day cards. You utter Charlies. And there, on the last page, we then get into, and I won't go blow by blow through all this because it's just too stupid and too boring, but you can see they've then got, what well, looks okay, you know, they've got these, um, they've got some good detail here. And I was, Starting to be impressed when they started giving us background info. Talks about the Kilmart location for the dagger for Sharky. But it doesn't mention it's 006, which is not very helpful. Uh, 004, sorry, I should say. It doesn't, you know, it's just like a random... We've got half of the tail chopped off here, so it's starting to go wrong, isn't it? Then we've got 006. And then we come to one of the ones that really annoyed me. When you've got your colour call-outs. We have got this... Um, sensor array, it's, it's the Blue Fox radar sensor array, uh, underneath. Now, th this is the paint callouts, and it, it shows it clearly there. So it shows you the decal, the, de the main decals, but then it, it doesn't tell you that's a decal. It, it shows it as though it needs to be painted, so I duly painted it, which is not a bad thing, because it's made it look quite nice, actually. But then you get to the end, the very end of the build, of course. I'm zooming out a bit because I'm getting too close. I'm starting to rave and rant now. The temper's starting to go. Argh. You get to the end of the build and you only find out in the very final stage in this very poorly diagrammed stencil guide, which is very small and very poor. Oh, look, there's actually a, there's actually a decal stencil for it. You Charlies, why didn't you tell us that before you showed it in the colour call out? Why didn't they just leave that off and show it all grey and then you put the, st the marking on the decal at the end? You utter chimps. What were they thinking of? It's just ridiculous. And then, oh, it gets, it gets worse. It gets worse. <laughs> Let me get some... Oh, yes, we know all about the Falcons War. They've, they've really done their research, these guys have. Have they, though? I don't think so. So they're talking about Sharky Ward here and the different aircraft and who's... They didn't actually mention the pilots here. Let's mention the aircraft. 006. Victory against Dagger and Hercules. Wrong. 006 did not shoot down a Dagger. It shot down a Pukara and a Herc. They've got 006 mixed up with Sharky Ward in their head because they haven't done the research properly. 004 here shot down a Dagger. That is correct. And that was Sharky Ward, as I mentioned uh, in my write-up on the Flory Forum, that was on the 21st of May, the day of the San Carlos landings, when the British forces actually landed on the islands, and of course there was a lot of air activity that day as they gave cover. Come on, you know, I've had to buy many, many books. This one, by the way, by um, Chris Sandon Bailey was really good. So, you know, most of my references, you don't get to the one that's, yeah, there's 004, so there's my reference book. Highly recommend that, very, very good. Also, I've got many, many other magazines. Is that the Falklands one? I've got loads of them, to be honest. Uh, Falklands Fort, I've got loads and loads of them. I won't show you more, it's a bit pointless, but lots of references, lots of photos, and you need every one of them because they are not giving you accurate information here. And then, you know, you get to the end, you come up against stupidity like that. And then finally, I realised that the, the data that they were giving uh, oh, look at this. I mean, you couldn't make this stuff up. This is just rank incompetence, isn't it? How could this ever get past this kit, any kind of QC? So that's the way it's printed. 
Looks like it's been to pronto print and somebody's, you know, got a piece of paper and cut half the Harry off. And then on the very last page, the very last image they show, different version, there's almost no Harrier at all! <laughs> Come on! That's absolutely ridiculous. It's just stupid, isn't it? And then here, we've got all these uh, stencil datas that we've got, as I mentioned, which are not, not, not clear. This is hard to follow. It's very, very tiny. They've gone and got this very faint print. Doesn't mention the Aiden gun pods which are underneath. It just forgets them and they have a couple of markings on them. They just get forgotten. And oh, yeah, and finally, I think this is the final, final item. There's a lot of these stencils on this guide where it shows, and I think that's one of them here, I think it's these, shows them up against a panel line that is almost certainly, yes, is on the real aircraft. But the panel line is shown here. It's not actually on the model. <laughs> so yeah, yeah and, and these are tiny, these are, it's a bit like phantoms, you know. That was fun, I can tell you. At least it's not got Batman, he's only 100. <laughs> but, because Phantom's 500, isn't it? Um, rank stupidity. You know, I've never encountered anything quite like it. I mean, there you go. So that's the instructions. I am now hereby officially going to commit them to what they deserve. That is the biggest load of pants I have ever encountered since I've started modelling when I was about five. Maybe seven. You utter imbeciles. I don't believe it. I've just officially ripped it up and that's what they deserve. Now, I said I'd be balanced. I mentioned about the weapons. They were quite... They are a bit softly moulded on the air to where the sidewinders. It probably looks alright now because I did a fairly decent job of painting them. I wish, I wish I'd actually got the res kit ones because they're a bit sharper, so I'd recommend that. But, you know, the, the tanks were okay and the, uh, the pylons were really good and they all fitted nicely as well. So it wasn't all bad. It's like the really easy stuff they've completely screwed up and all the hard stuff they did not too bad, like the nozzles. It's baffling. It's baffling that they could come up with a product that's really that appalling. Well, that's the, that's the major end to my rant, really. Um, The, the, the other thing that I didn't allude to, which is probably the biggest single issue, actually, which I sort of skipped over, was just the join. The fuselage and the wing join was dire. It needed a lot of modification, a lot of very careful sanding. I mean, that join is just about perfect now, but it doesn't come like that. You're going to have to do some serious fettling on this kit to get it right. I'm just going to try and move it a little bit more. Let's try and get it. There we go. Talking about that zone right dead centre in the image now. Because that was awful. It had this hunchback look, which was completely wrong. As you saw, many of you, the actual... And this, was, this was the most glaring thing that everybody picked up on when they saw the photographs, of course. You have this bizarre, like a U-shaped cutout, oblong cutout, in the actual fuselage. And then the wing has got the spigot sort of bit, the knob that goes in, which is nowhere near the same size, not even close, I and mean, it's completely different dimensions. <laughs> and you ended up with this little tiny knob and this great big hole. So in the end, I just cut the knob off, filled the, the cutout with plastic card, and then filled it as anyone. But this is just adding hours and hours, filing and sanding, and putting putty in, and you saw some of that in the pictures. Why? It doesn't need to be that crude. Now, they, they know they got this wrong. Any of you who've seen or have got in the stash or have built excuse me, the GR1, GR3, they have changed these parts. Now it's now flush. It doesn't have this, this cutout and this nub thing. They're now flush to flush fit. So they know that they screwed it up. But why didn't somebody just... If somebody just tried to build that kit... It would never have got through production. Can you imagine Tamiya accepting something as dire as what you just seen there? The person that come up with that would be fired on the spot and probably escorted out by the Japanese police. And rightly so, frankly. Because they think, you're going to bankrupt our company. You can you just imagine it, can't you? They're not even carried away. You'd have to commit Harry Carry. I mean, you can joke about it, but it's, it's and I know, it's, we're having a bit of a laugh. 
off and I'm having a drink and I hope you're you're probably chuckling you're like, I can just imagine the live chat now that you're having a right laugh but I tell you what if you try and build this and, and the several of you who are watching have tried to build this a couple of you like Scott and others Clive has pretty much got close to finishing his I hope he's able to finish it one day you these two gentlemen in particular spring to mind they know they know exactly what I'm talking about how could they be so dumb and kinetic have they not tried to build it why do you have parts with nubs and no locating hell for it to go into? So everything has becomes a massively skilled keyhole surgery operation. And then you wonder why I say, now is the winter of our discontent. This was a winter of discontent. I was fuming. I just don't, I just don't think that... I have, Well, I say this. I know a lot of you have probably said, oh, you've done a nice job with that. It's OK. Cheer up and forget about it. Yeah, but it's not right, though, is it? Not £75. Who are they kidding? They're just it's stupid. They don't deserve your business. They don't deserve to survive. This is like... Now, they have made... I've got to be balanced and fair. Everybody tells me... I haven't got personal experience, but I, I'm confident that people have told me are right. They've made a few decent kits, but, again, with terrible instructions. But they've made the Pukara, which everybody says is really quite nice... They've made the F-104 Starfighter, which everybody says is probably their best kit, and the recent F-16s, which are got some issues, but not to this level. Quite a nice kit. So they can produce good kits. And then they've got this Harry GR3, which is not quite the donkey that this is. Um, I mean, the, Phil Flory built the FA2 version, and I, I had a good look at that, because I hadn't seen it before. And I could see that he was fighting with some of the issues I was fighting with, but he didn't have quite as many as you get on this one. Because even that had got some modified, it got better instructions and one or two parts were modified. So they knew they were going long and they were fettling it, you know. I can't, I can't believe it. But even he, you can see he's almost like, he's very polite about it, of course, especially because he's got a model shop and he wants to sell the product, which is understandable. But you can even see him gritting his teeth at times, fighting that FA2. And you could almost hear the slight exasperation and the frustration that he was suffering as well. <sighs> But this is the worst one. I'm, I'm confident this is their worst product. But I, going back to the original question from Jason, you know, I, I just wanted it. I wanted to have what you see before you now. That's what I wanted to achieve. I got there. I think I've got a reason to be fairly satisfied with it. But joking apart, if anybody else wants to have a go at this, you need to know what you're getting yourself into because it's a horror. <laughs> it's an absolute pig, really. Move it forward, I'll give you a bit slightly better view. There you go. And if we just um, give it a gentle spin around, you can see the ladders, which I originally, in the original photographs, I had mounted in slightly the wrong position, but it's now spot on. Yeah, it's very nice, isn't it? I'm very, very pleased with it. I, th I think that that's frankly better than I could have really hoped. It's certainly, if, if I could see that, you know, back at Christmas, if I could see the future and see that now, I'd be delighted. Because it was it was heading for the bin, you know. It was heading for the bin. And this is the point of the rant, really. It's like, we shouldn't accept that. People said, yeah. Uh, the chap in America said yesterday, he said, he done a really nice job of it. No, as we say here, nothing a skilled modeler can't fix. Yes, that's fine. But not at £75. £75? What's that, $130 or something? $120? What? Come on. That's, that's €100 Euro nearly. It's absolutely absurd. They're ridiculous. Uh, I know at least one modelling company, uh, model shop company, has dropped them, and I know others are not not happy. Um, they are, they, they they've had massive price rises, and they've not, you know, they. I, I mean, I I feel I deserve an apology from them. Really, I should get some free kits, frankly, for what I've been through. I mean, the result is superb, but that's not because of kinetic. You know, that's thanks to me and Phil Flory with his washers and these great companies that make the glue and the putty, like Deluxe Materials, there's lots of their products in it, I can tell you. It's frustrating. We shouldn't be doing that. We're supposed to be having an enjoyable hobby, and that's that's not enjoyable. Uh, you know, like I said to Jason, I have not enjoyed any of this. I can't say, apart from the last day. <coughs> I don't mean that just because it was finally over. I do enjoy that final stage where you just put all the little pieces together. That's like the jigsaw comes together. And I do enjoy that part on any kit. 
But I certainly won't be buying any more kinetic kits, uh, and I will take other people's word for it that they've got one or two good kits because I'm not I'm not interested. If they can't be bothered to do the instructions, I can't be bothered to buy the product. I'm afraid, so they can get lost, frankly. Uh, Sharky Ward, of course, he was from Aerobonus, Aeres, Aerobonus. I'll put Sharky over there, and the ladder was from Bren Gun in the Czech Republic, of course. Um, that was that was good. A little bit fiddly, of course. But they always are, aren't they? Things like that. So there we have it. I oh, knew he always falls over. Let's just move it first. Out of the way. It's an into safety zone between the US and the British flag. Come on, Sharky. You can do it, mate. Come on, mate. There you go. How's that? <laughs> Is that look all right? Can I zoom it in? Can you still see it? Yeah. Put the light over here. Look at that. <laughs> Okay, anyway, enough of that. So that's that's my rant, really. Um, I try to be factual and objective and fair. And I say there were parts of the kit that were decent and there were part, a lot of parts. You know, parts you expected to be really difficult were fine and the, the things that should be straightforward were terrible. So uh, everybody's been asking what's next, what's next. Well, I'm going to continue my Falcon's Odyssey because I think that poor old Sharky Ward and his mates needed a bit of help. So we're going to be doing... This won't be soon, I'm going to have a little bit of a break, because I, I am genuinely mentally exhausted from this, totally. But we're going to have the Sea Wolf and Sea Dart. Uh, this is the uh, maritime ship-based uh, anti-aircraft system, which was used to defend the fleet uh, as the sort of last line of defence goalkeepers, if you like, uh, in the Falklands War, and they did shoot down a few Argentine aircraft. Um, and I think Argentina had some of these as well, they had Sea Dart themselves, in fact. So they bought them off the British Prime. <laughs> but there we go. So uh, that's what I'm going to be doing next. Uh, I'm also going to finish off my little, uh, just a bit tribute to Jason really, my little um, street diorama that he sent me for the Puma, which I've painted but I haven't done the finishing on yet. So that's, that's going to get done. That's a, the work of an afternoon. And I'm just going to do kits. That, that's very straightforward really. It's nothing much to it. Um, whether I do the HMF Invincible, I'm mm, not sure about that. That's another story really. Uh, we shall see. That's the Revell. That's another. That's the old Dragon kit. Mm, that's not a great kit. Oh, that's got some issues. I can tell you. And if Dominic's watching, he knows because he made a very, very nice one of it. And he did an excellent job. Um, but I must admit, watching his build thread, and I thought, oh no, I don't need another one like this. So that might get. I'll. I'll I will bet. I'm definitely going to build. I might leave it for a while, though. I think. I'll leave it for a while. But uh, oh, Shark is falling over because I tapped the table. Um, why don't I lean him against the sidewinder? Just be careful with that. Very dangerous. <laughs> um, but there we go. And then moving on from there, I think I'm probably going to have a crack at the, by the end of the year, I think I'm going to do the F-14 Tomcat. Maybe the P-38 Lightning, from both from Tamiya, 48 scale. And I think I might have a crack at that Edward uh, Zero to go with the Tomcat to do this final countdown type of thing for Christmas. That would be quite good. The only downside of that, of course, is that we have got the infamous Edouard stupid new design of decals, which nobody likes. Well, I'll say nobody. I think 1% like them. Um, and they just make it difficult and make it very easy to scratch and damage your paint finish trying to get the stupid clear carrier film off the top. Well, I wouldn't even do that, especially with the being a zero. I'll just get stencils and I'll just spray the orange uh, rising suns on it. No problem at all. Um, anyway, Ooh, look at that. Sorry, my watch is the, it's the James Bond commander's watch. I thought I'd go for the Royal Navy theme today, so I've got the Royal Navy watch to, in my Royal Navy subject. So that's where I'm at, really. Um, and then next year, I think I'm definitely going to... Uh, I'm, I'm not saying this to put it in the long grass. I, there's, there's a reason, which I won't bore you with now, but uh, next year I'll be definitely, I think at New Year, probably building that Mosquito from Tamiya. I'm going to enjoy some really nice, nice builds now. I'm going to get into... I, I can't be fighting... Every step of the way that fought me that kit, every single step, even that final day when I was putting those little headlights on the undercarriage, that frustrated me. I thought, here they go again. It's just it's just like it was designed by a group of children that never spoke to each other. Very strange, very strange. So I can't recommend Kinetic. I'm afraid that um, my revenge is total. Not revenge of the Sith, revenge of the modeler and fully justified. Anyway, what did you think? Do you think that that's reasonable at £75? I'm sure most of you don't. Um, 
I know that people like David was shaking his head and saying, the only the only good thing you buy it for is, is the box art, you know, which wasn't bad, I suppose. It wasn't too bad, was it? So we put it there. Let's pop the box out there, because that is, that is quite a good feature. There we go, a bit of Falklands nostalgia for us. There we are. Yeah, so quite a grim experience all around, really. But it does show, I suppose, on the plus side, I'm not blame me on trumpet here because I say people have done better ones than me I'm sure but it just shows the value of perseverance if you really desperately want that result just keep pushing just keep pushing um, and it was helpful that people made all these comments that you have made um, and that's one of the benefits of being on the forum as well people do encourage each other especially when they've got problems and they, people will chip in with suggestions um, somebody did make a couple of practical suggestions which I think I adopted on this and I can't think what they were now um, but, but there's always advice you know you're not on your own again if I had not been and I was doing daily updates you know and this went on and on I think people actually were getting a bit fed up with me doing it in a way because it seemed to be such slow progress and it was slow but of course all of a sudden it sort of ends all of a sudden very, and you can see people that I think were getting a bit bored with seeing it then at the end when they saw the final result because they didn't know anything about Sharky or they didn't know anything about the bomb, the musing bomb a few little add-ons I sort of did there Sharky's beard uh, trying to add a little bit of fun and realism into it at the same time really and you can see people have sort of said to me yeah, that is the benefit, that is the value of persevering don't give up but and this is my sort of takeaway moral of the story. If if it wasn't something I was so passionate about, I would have I would have been it. And if I come across something like that again that fights me to that level, it's just going to go straight in the bin. Why would you waste your life on that? You know, it's not worth it. You know, life's too short. It's supposed to be a fun hobby. Let's let's keep it fun. Let's do things we enjoy. So that was the Kinetic Sea Harrier FRS One. The mother of all battles finally won. Victory is mine. And yeah, I think that um, it's all what well, somebody said. Uh, was it Lee said, um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I said, oh, I don't feel stronger after it though. But it's character building stuff. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all enjoyed plowing through that. I don't want to ramble on too much. I think I've said my piece now. I think I deserve the champagne, don't you? Ooh. It does taste sweeter though. I've had to wait and wait and wait. We've had that for about six weeks. And I'll, now, 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 I'll find the space in the cabinet for that now. I'll put it on its deck if I can get the deck to stop warping. Because it keeps warping. It makes it look like the, 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 the centre wheel looks like it's lifting off, like it's too short. Which it was, by the way. That was nothing I didn't mention. It actually was too short, but I fixed it. But this, because this is warping up, it's lifting the outriggers up, of course, and it's making the, the plane lift off the ground or appear to in the middle, which it would have done if I hadn't corrected it. Because I was going to put it uh, a bit more weight on wheels look, and I had to reduce my expectations on that because, well, you just couldn't. Um, but it was barely reaching the ground because the leg is too short, the main leg. Another stupid failure, you know. If Kinetic had just done a QC check on their instructions, check that the numbers were right on the parts, just the most basic stuff that any company would check on its product, that has not got a QC. They can't have a QC department for that to have got through, or they didn't have at the time, obviously. And that's the only explanation I can think of, really, other than deliberate stupidity. <clears throat> it's almost like you wonder if some employee, some embittered employee was trying to sabotage the company. That's how bad it is, really. It's the only explanation I can really come to, come to really, as a conclusion. It's just weird. Anyway, there we go. So no more kinetics for me. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching. It hasn't been too long and boring. I'm sorry it was a split into two. We did have a technical issue there. Oops. But I think that gave you a chance to go and refill your glasses, charge your glasses, and I wish, want to wish you all, Jason especially, because his health has been a bit of a concern, and it sounds like he's he's got some good progress and better news. So cheers, Jason. I drink to your good health. And to all of you for supporting me and watching this rambling rant. I hope you found it interesting. And I say, 
you know, by all means go back and have a look at, again at the montage, the, the mother of all battles, because some of these things I've just alluded to, you can see them all in those photographs. Every day, another battle. Every day, something stupid that you spend hours and hours trying to fix that shouldn't be there in the first place. You know, if it was 1985, you'd accept all that stuff and, and say, oh, it's, you know. And, and I'm to blame. I'm one of these people that said, I did the review, David said this, and somebody else pointed it out and said, you gave this 9 out of 10, didn't you? I never trust you again. <laughs> but this is what I've said before. You cannot trust an inbox review, even from the most skilled, honest reviewer. It doesn't really tell us a lot. It just tells you what it looks like. And that is a gorgeous model on the sprue. It comes in these lovely, crisp, crinkly bags that are really sharp and it's bright looking, clear plastic and, you know, the clear parts are nice and everything looks, it looks brilliant until you start, until you get the glue out and start cutting the parts off and realise that nothing actually Nothing fits, Kinetic! Nothing fits! No, none of this fits, you fools! <laughs> kinetic! <laughs> right, enough. I'm not going to mention the K word again. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you very much for watching, supporting me throughout. Got the result I wanted in the end, and I'm just going to go and forget about it and pretend it was a horrible nightmare. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, please look after yourselves. Hope you'll give me... 10 out of 10, with a thumbs up and a like. And don't forget to subscribe and ding that notification bell because we have more new things coming up. We've got the Winged Up Wings kits, of course, from the Lost Ark. We've got five of them still to review. It's incredible. Looking forward to doing that. And uh, th th they're always a pleasure, aren't they? Especially when you see this historical element. We get sort of lost in the photographs and the historical references. It's, it's really... It's fun just to watch, really. You don't have to build the kit. You learn and enjoy from it just by flicking through their instructions. So that is coming very soon. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Have a great Easter, everybody. And I hope to see you in the very near future. Thanks all for your time. Look after yourselves. And bye for now.